we are a small cog in a giant wheel of manufacturing that, that really drives our society and, 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 and drives our economy. That's Walter Voigt, president and CEO of Adaptive 3D, talking about how his company uses new 3D printing methods of production. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Laura Harris. Welcome to Auto News Now. We'll hear more from Walter on additive manufacturing later. But first, our lead story on second quarter sales figures. Sales numbers across the industry continue to show a decline. And Tesla's second quarter earnings are no different. But amid layoffs, demand looks strong and factory capacity continues. The automaker is showing signs that factory woes in China, Texas, and Berlin are on the mend. Tesla appears ready for a growth phase. One analyst even says Tesla is Apple on steroids because of the automaker's lead in the EV race. Not too long ago, Musk called the automaker's newly opened auto plants in Berlin and Austin gigantic money furnaces, losing billions of dollars as they ramp up production. But as they pick up speed, Tesla could post big numbers in the second half. You can read more on these stories in our newsletter, The Daily. To subscribe, go to the More section on our website and click Newsletters on the left side of the screen. Meanwhile, a verdict involving Tesla. There's an update to a 2018 Tesla crash we've been following. A Florida jury found a Tesla crash victim was 99% responsible for his own death. Tesla was found only 1% responsible. The plaintiff and his friend were sitting in the passenger seat of a Model S. The 18-year-old lost control of the vehicle while driving 116 miles per hour and crashed into a concrete wall of a Fort Lauderdale house, killing them both. This is the first trial the electric car maker faced over a fatal accident involving one of its EVs. Tesla faces more lawsuits and regulatory probes, over accidents linked to its autopilot driver assistance feature. In other news, Porsche confirms plans for a flagship EV crossover. Porsche CEO Oliver Bloom wants to launch a range-topping full electric crossover, positioned above the Cayenne and Macan. He says the EV will be a very sporty interpretation of an SUV. The company wants to target higher margin segments and tap into new sales opportunities, and is set to arrive in the second half of the decade. The automaker aims for 80% of its global sales to be fully electric by 2030. We're able to print a small part that looks like this and then put it in an oven and in 60 seconds, boom, it blows up into a part that is two to seven times bigger than the printed part. Once again, that's president and CEO of Adaptive 3D, Walter Voigt, showing firsthand how 3D printing technology works. Walter was recently at a foam expo in Novi, Michigan. His company is a subsidiary of Desktop Metal, a 3D printing company. He says his team pioneers new forms of additive manufacturing and takes metals, plastics, ceramics, and even wood to pattern them and make them complex three-dimensional parts. As we can increase our printing throughput by 2x to 7x, that dramatically reduces the cost of that printing machine on the end part. And that lets us compete in some of these high volume applications that before have been limited by not being able to economically produce high performance parts well enough. In a time of ongoing supply chain issues, 3D printing can be a solution for some of the shortages. Automakers turn to 3D printing for rapid prototyping, lightweighting, and production of a growing number of parts. And Walter's company is going full speed ahead with the new production methods. I think what we're doing is opening people's eyes to a new way of manufacturing goods that is fundamentally cheaper, fundamentally lighter, fundamentally better, based on, on decades of technology. 3D printers are becoming faster and more flexible. And 3D printing for high volume vehicles is not far off. Walter says 3D printed parts are competitive with traditional ways of production. It allows us to have materials that are strong, tough, tear resistant, creep resistant, fatigue resistant, wear resistant, um, but still have a fantastic life cycle to deliver value in a greener, cleaner, lighter weight ecosystem. That's something that the automotive uh, OEMs really are all trying to do. Thank you, Walter, for joining me. The growing electric vehicle world is showing no signs of stopping as automakers continue to design and produce more AVs. 
and Hyundai is no different. As the automaker is in the process of developing an affordable EV for Europe that could succeed the i10. The automaker is working on a battery-powered mini car, but it will take some time to get a production-ready version. This comes as lawmakers in Europe tighten emissions regulations and consumer demand for EVs increases and leads automakers to develop affordable and small EVs. Hyundai will launch 11 more full electric vehicles in Europe by 2030. That's all we have today for Auto News Now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Auto News TV and online at autonews.com for updates from our reporters all day, every day. I'm Laura Harris. Have a great night, and I'll see you all next time.